he said like, if I lose my income and I get taxed, it doesn't make any sense for me. So I basically just take that and you, not use it against him, but like use that to help him make sure he says, yeah, thank you for joining us on the next session of the live callings. Uh, and uh, today we're gonna be calling on large retail centers. Yeah, sure. Yeah, hi Victor, I was calling you about your building. How you doing? I'm okay, thank you. Great to hear. So I was reaching out to you because I run an investment firm locally and uh, we're going through a 1031 exchange and I was just curious if you'd be totally against selling the building. I don't know. I have a few people calling me on it, but I don't know. It's a good chunk of my income now. I mean, if we structured a deal, I'm going to get banged on taxes. Yeah. I mean, if we, if we structured a deal where you don't lose any of that, or you don't lose much of that income where we can continue doing it, where you take payments over time, this way you have consistent income for a, a decent period of time and you don't get banged on taxes. Would you be totally against an offer? No, I'm, I'm always willing to listen. Okay. Um, I mean, have you received an offer uh, to date that you thought was relatively close to where you needed to be? I have. What kind of price was that? I've been offered two million. So two million bucks, and then uh, how much? How much income are you making per year on the property that you need to continue? or like to continue? Probably clear somewhere like around 100,000. 100,000 a year. So if you hypothetically, if we were able to structure a deal where you're being- yeah, That's the net. Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying that's if we net. if we were able to structure a deal, Victor, where the total purchase was around that $2 million number and your income was roughly or pretty damn close to that $100,000 a year number, would you be open to possibly reviewing an offer? Yes, I would. Okay, what's the best email for you? Because I'm- def def uh, Definitely review it. Okay, great. What's the best email? email for you? Is I'm going to kick you an email momentarily, uh, probably a little bit later today, if not tomorrow. So bear with me a little bit. And this is your cell phone, right, Victor? Yes, it's my mobile. Yeah. And I'll shoot you a text with my information. This way you have it as well. All right. Because this is this is my personal cell as well that you're talking to me on. Okay. Thank you very All much. All right. Thanks, Victor. Uh, and uh, just to, just to okay. be super, just really quick, Victor, real quick, because I'm going to run some numbers. The tenants that you have in the building right now, are they, I'm guessing they're, they're on gross rent leases, right? They don't pay taxes and insurance there? Uh, that's correct. Okay. And then is it a hundred percent occupied or is there any vacancy? You said, you said triple net leases. What did you say? I was saying I'm imagining they're not on triple net leases. No. My company pays the taxes okay. and insurance. And insurance. That makes sense. Um, and they common the water, except for one tenant, they, they split the water, the water bill with me, but they all pay their own. Uh, not all. I have two offices that I supply the electric, two small offices I supply the electric. Everybody else pays their own electric and gas. You're talking about you probably gross somewhere around 200000 a year, but you have about a hundred thousand in expenses. Uh, I think your gross is less than that. Got it. What do you think you're grossing roughly? Like one sixty, one eighty? Uh, yeah, maybe one sixty, one sixty five, something like that. I'll put something together real quick, and then you say you, right now your take home is around a hundred a year, right? Yeah, the net is about a hundred a year. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And if I get you something in writing, would you be able to get me some information on like the leases and when everyone's up and how much they're paying, kind of thing? Yeah, if I decide to proceed, of course, you're entitled to that information. Okay, great. Just want to make sure we're on the same page. All right, Victor, listen, I appreciate it. I'll get something over to you hopefully in the next day or so, and uh, we'll take it from there. All right, thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye now. Bye now. I'm talking to him quickly, and he immediately told me he doesn't want to lose his income, right? He just gave me the reasoning in which he might not sell, right? He said, like, if I lose my income and I get taxed, it doesn't make any sense for me, right? So I basically just take that and not use it against him, but like use that to help him make sure he says yes, right? So the way I'm structuring the question is like, hey, I'm guessing you received a number of offers over the year. Have you, like, have you received received an offer that you were thinking that was pretty damn close to where you need to be. And he's like, yeah, I received a $2 million offer. Great. Which is like a hundred dollars a square foot, by the way. Right. I mean, that's a great price. That's a great freaking price. I know that where he needs to be on his price. And then I said, so where do you need to be on uh, your income? He immediately says to me that he needs to be around a hundred, that he nets a hundred thousand a year. So pretty close to a hundred thousand a year. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to offer him 1.8 million or close to that number, 1.8 ish for the deal. I'll put down 10%, 20%, and then he'll finance the rest at 100,000 a year. I'll break even day one or pretty close to it. All right, what I could even do is think about how crazy this is. I'll pay him, let's just say I offer him 80,000 a year. I'll pay him 80,000 a year on his um, instead of 100,000 and I'll give him 180 grand up front. If he says yes, okay, that means my net cash flow, because it's netting 100,000 a year, my net cash flow will be 20 grand. I only put down 180 grand. My cash flow, my cash on cash return is over 10%. It's like 11 and, 11 and change percent, right? Now, again, I'm not telling you he's gonna say yes to that, but I'm going to offer that probably to begin with. This way I can start the negotiation and I'll probably even start off with like a really quick roundabout number because I'll say something like, I'll pay you $6,000 a month. Instead of 80 grand, I'll say 6,000 a month, which is 72,000 a year, which means that I'll cash flow 28 grand a year instead of 20,000. So I'll start there, 1.8 and set in, in $6,000 a month for 10 years, where this guy's got a locked in, you know, he doesn't have to manage anything, easy deal, right? The point is like, that's how I'll structure the upfront and then we'll see what he says on a counter, right? So I'm just gonna take a quick note for myself. Yeah, I'm looking for Ray, please. Hello, I'm sorry, you're looking for who? Ray 
Property owner Steve. Tom was calling. Yeah, my name is Henry. I was calling him about the property he owns on Highway 17. Okay. Um, can I help you? He's not in today. I'm his assistant. Okay, great. Yeah, you can just tell him I gave him a call about the building. Um, you know, we run an investment firm locally and we're we're trying to move uh, uh quite a sum of money for a 1031 exchange, and I was curious if we might be open to selling the building. Well, we have several, so I don't know which one you're calling about. Well, yeah, I know he owns a couple of dealerships. I actually have a few off market properties on Route 17 he might be open to looking at. So I think it might be what lucrative for us to chat. I mean, I know he might not be selling his exact property, but no, we're not in the market to sell anything. And we actually have a broker that we work closely with if we're interested in buying anything. But I'm, thank you. I'm not a broker, so I'm not trying to list anything. I'm saying I have a lot of off market properties that he might be able to buy off of us. But okay, sounds great. You let me know whatever works best. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Bye. This is the exact same situation, right? Like she's a gatekeeper. I'm trying to get the guy on the phone. She's, do you see how the gatekeeper is making, like she's coming up with her own bullshit answers. Okay. Which mean absolutely nothing, but she is the gatekeeper, right? She wants me to stay away from Ray. The guy's got a broker and he's a car dealer. I don't really give a shit about car dealerships. It's not my forte. It's not the types of properties I sell, right? It's just not my thing. So I could give a shit, right? Like as soon as I saw it was a car dealer, cause I looked at the property address at the same time, I kind of lose interest. However, if this person hypothetically owned a big retail center, I obviously want to know who the fuck they are, right? Because they own that one center and I could probably sell more retail center. Dealerships is a lot more about zoning and like restructuring deals where, it, you know, if someone who owns a big retail center, multifamily industrial, they're just going to buy as is existing properties. I'm not saying you can't work with those people. I just don't. I choose not to.